Hey guys, so today we're gonna be drawing some trees and we're looking at how to do drawing a bunch of different style trees in the simplest way possible. So I'm gonna start with this type of pine tree here on the right and you'll notice the shape, it's quite vertical, isn't it? It's a little wider in its foliage nearer towards the base and it gets a little narrow as it goes up. So I'm gonna start this off real simple. I'm gonna, I like to start drawing the tree usually from the trunk at the bottom. I'm just gonna do a straight line up and then I'm gonna go up just about as far as I think the trunk goes and from here I'm gonna start the pattern of foliage, the pines, needles, branches going back and forth, back and forth, up to a nice steep steady point like so. So there's a nice big pine to start off my drawing. And I'm just gonna put a little brown line here, not a totally flat line, having a little swing to it kind of keeps it a little more interesting. And I wanna practice kind of doing a, some different pine trees. Now, this could actually be a painting right here, sort of a pine landscape. Let's put in some more pine trees, but you know how we're gonna make our picture look a little more real and interesting? Instead of having just one, and instead of doing them all the same size, Let's do some smaller ones. So to make them seem smaller, they can kind of rest going back and further different distances on the horizon line. We're indicating different distances by a different height between these pine trees. So same style tree, but because they're resting more on the horizon line and they have varying sizes, some being smaller, some being taller, it gives it a sense of depth more, that these could be further back. Now what if some of these were really far away and much smaller in size? Then we'd really know, oh, these aren't just smaller pine trees, but they are, there's, they're further in space. And they're definitely further in space because, look, they're, they've at least gotta be behind this horizon line. Hey, let's look, we can make this one look a little more closer to us if we pull the trunk line down lower, right here, even more. Now I can actually make this a much taller pine tree now that I've pulled the trunk down. We could extend the pine branches a little bit lower and we could even make this go almost off the top of the page there. Let's give it a nice little cast shadow. Okay, let's do the next type of tree. So here we go. Make a little point for where the base of the trunk is, pulling up the trunk first. You notice how long this really is before it gets to the foliage. Now you can actually outline this sort of shape. It's pretty circular almost, but there's some ripples in it. Branches down here. Now, the nice thing about charcoal that I'm using is you can really mass it in dark in the bottom and then kind of like let that flay off a little lighter as it gets up higher. Rub that with your finger if you like and give, give really a nice edge. That thin edge is gonna really go back when you're doing trees. Okay, so then how about we could still add in a line for some kind of ground. So our tree's gonna be more in the foreground as we talked about last week, foreground, background, middle ground. So let's give it a little bit of shading, however. And now let's try doing some different trees. So we learned about the pine tree. We could have even more of a middle ground back here, like a mid-mid area, right? And then let's indicate that there's some pine trees in it too. See what that looks like. Try doing a couple. Now some of this branch of trees line could be more of this type of tree. You could slightly shade that in and even indicate a little bit of that foliage again. So again, last week we also did foreground, middle ground, and background. We talked about that more, which you already knew. But I'm always thinking that way when I'm doing trees. I'm always thinking, how does this tree fit within a landscape? I'm not just thinking about usually a tree just by itself but I'm thinking of how it could go with an entire scene. Okay, 
Okay, so let's just do a trunk study. Keep it simple. Here's where my base of my trunk is gonna go. Let's kind of make a swing rhythm and we'll say the top's gonna go up there. And this is gonna be a nice experiment of texture where you can just kind of make like little texture strokes. Just little choppy texture strokes. Maybe there's a little bear in the forest behind the tree. So here's an elm tree. So an elm tree, let's do a little horizon line. They've got, see, they've got a nice uh, big one right here in the front, and then they've got some other ones farther back. You can just barely tell that this one in the front, it's got the lowest trunk even reaching below the horizon line. That's really important for making it look closer. All right, so I'm gonna start with the branches. And it's got a lot of foliage. Look at this foliage. It takes up probably, here's one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters takes up almost 75% of the height of the foliage. It's a little weird, but... I like to do a little back and forth on this. It's almost like little brush strokes back and forth and leaving some areas getting a lot of light. We also want some gaps in the tree so like birds can fly through the leaf where the sky holes are, right? You can even do some little dash marks sometimes, little dash marks. If I get into trouble, I like drawing trees with charcoal, I can always rub away and redraw and stuff. And then it's nice to have a few leaves that just kind of hang out outside of the main foliage, kind of looks a little more genuine. I think my trunk could be... Okay, let's look at um, elm, oak, and apple tree. So the cool thing about these is they're so huge and like awesome looking, right? So here's an apple tree, I guess it's saying. Almost looks like an oak tree to me. I don't know the trees that well. I just know how to draw them, but I try to learn what I can. So this looks really thick from this perspective. It's got really thick branches, limbs. I'm trying to go in and kind of catch the rhythm more than anything of this tree trying to go in and just get the almost like it's almost like huge tentacles or something of like an octopus and it just the limbs are so massive and I'm trying to feel around the rhythm so using my line to kind of capture the rhythm of this tree more than anything and I know that looks really abstract but sometimes that's how you have to approach it
you know, sometimes you can go in with an eraser and pull back some lights in. And this book hasn't really shown us the uh, the buds or anything on this tree, so kind of just keeping it keeping it there. Almost just more trunk action than anything. 